Number 105, an RLC series circuit has a 200 ohm resistor and a 25 milli Henry inductor. At 8,000 hertz, the phase angle is 45 degrees letter A. What is the impedance? All right, so impedance is Z. So there's a couple of ways we can solve this. I think the, well, actually there might only be one particular way. Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, because we don't know the capacitance. So the uh, cosine of the phase angle is gonna be equal to the resistance divided by the impedance Z. So to find Z here, just simply cross multiply these two terms. And we notice now that uh, we can simply solve Z. We know the resistance is 200 ohms. The cosine then of this is gonna be 45. Now make sure since you're plugging in a degree, make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Otherwise it's going to come out all types of funkiness. So 200 divided by then cosine of 45. And we get an answer of about 2.83. Uh, Two po yeah, well, you know what? I'm not even going to do scientific. 283, right? And that's in terms of ohms. That's the impedance, all right? So now, letter B. Find the circuit's capacitance. All right, so uh, what we have to do in order to solve this is we have to use this now impedance formula, where it says the impedance will be equal to the square root of the resistance squared plus then the reactive uh, inductance minus the reactive capacitance squared. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to solve this for the reactive capacitance because I know I can actually find the uh, reactive inductance. All right, so what I'll do maybe first is let's find that number for the reactive inductance. All right, so the reactive inductance is going to be equal to, and we've seen this before, 2 pi times the frequency multiplied then by the inductance. So it's 2 pi. The frequency here they told us was 8,000 hertz, and the uh, inductance here is 25 millihenry, but you know we need that in Henry, so that's 25 times 10 to the minus 3, right? That's an X sub L. And then just plug it on in. So this is going to be 2 pi times 8,000 times then 25 times 10 to the minus 3. And this works out to be about 1.26 times 10 to the third, okay, ohms. This is the number we're going to use to plug into here. I'm not going to plug it in yet, though, all right? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little algebra here. So uh, first, let's start off by squaring both sides to get rid of this radical, okay, on the outside. So this now tells me that the impedance squared will be equal to re, uh, the um, resistance squared plus then the difference between the reactive uh, inductance and the reactive capacitance squared. Now I'm gonna subtract this term on over, right? So it's basically now going to be z squared minus r squared is gonna be equal to xl minus xc, this whole thing squared. Now I want a square root, right? Because I gotta get rid of the square on the right-hand side. So this is now going to be square root of z squared minus r squared. And that's gonna be equal to xl minus xc. And now what I'm gonna do, because I want a positive answer, I'm gonna add this on over to the left and then I'm gonna subtract this on over to the right, and this is now the formula, okay? So here we go. The reactive capacitance now, this is not the capacitance, but it is the reactive capacitance, this will then be equal to, and I can further substitute in, but at this point I'm just gonna start calculating, 1.26 times 10 to the third, minus then square root of the impedance of 283, minus then the resistance 200, and both of those are squared, all right? So take out that calculator. And we're gonna subtract then the square root of 280. Let me get that exact answer, all right? So the exact answer there, 282.8, blah, 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 squared. And then subtract from that 200 now squared. And we get an answer here of the reactive capacitance will be equal to about 1057-ish. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this reactive capacitance, I'll do it up here. Notice that that is, remember that is equal to 2 pi times the frequency multiplied now by the capacitance. To solve for this capacitance, I'm just going to now kind of just do a little, you know, swap a ruski. Right, and now we have our easy way to calculate. So this is 2 pi times the frequency of 8,000 times in that reactive capacitance of 1,057. So let's plug it on in. 1 divided by now parenthesis 2 pi times then 8,000, times then that answer. Close those parentheses and we get about 1.88.
times 10 to the minus 8, and that is in farads. All right, it's about 18, 19, whatever, nanofarads. So that's that, all right? So that is letter B. And letter C, if the root mean square voltage is 408 volts, what is the average power that is uh, supplied? So to find average power now, uh, what we're going to do is, uh, well, first I got to erase some of this stuff, right? So let's maybe erase, uh, yeah, let's erase this. All right, so let's find the average power now. So this is letter D. It says that the average power is going to be equal to the root mean square voltage. So I sub RMS times the root mean square, sorry, root mean square current times the root mean square voltage times then the cosine of the phase angle. Now what I'm going to do though is I'm going to do a little substitution. All right, I'm going to take this because this is equal to RMS and I'm going to substitute it on in. All right. So what happens now is this basically will now become power is going to be equal to VRMS squared over the impedance, right? This looks very similar to the power formulas that we were dealing with in right regular circuits times then cosine of the phase angle. All right. So the voltage 408, square it. 408 squared divided by the uh, uh, impedance of the circuit, right? We found that before to be the 283. I erased it, but it, it's here. That's why I remembered. So that's 283. Remember, it's rounded. Then multiply by cosine of that phase angle of 45. Make sure you calculate it again in degree mode. And we're going to take 408, square it, divide it then by that exact value of 282.84, blah, blah, blah. Then multiply it by cosine of 45. And it's about 416 now, 416 watts. Guys, thanks again for tuning in. Appreciate it, all right? I look forward to helping you with more problems. I think there might be one left in this chapter, but who knows if I'm even going to do it. We'll see you soon. Take care.